my name is David. Uh, I'm a developer for Compute Canada, and also I'm bioinformatician for Compute Canada. Uh, and one of the things that I develop in Compute Canada is Galax uh, that we ported to uh, Compute Canada very recently. Uh, so today we're going to just uh, learn a little bit of the Galax interface and why someone should be motivated to use Galaxy. Uh, so the, the basic idea behind Gal so basically here's the outline of this, this talk. So we're going to talk about uh, reproducible science. Um, I'm going to give some examples of workflow using Galax and also different types of server, Galax server. GenApp, which is a Canadian project that includes Galax, and I will talk about very extensively about that. Uh, putting data and analyzing data inside of Galax and then processing new data. So. Uh, the base uh, motivation of having and using Galax is uh, is that if you have to do something once, you know you probably don't need any sort of scripting and sort of programming. You just go there and do your analysis like you did this morning. But if you have to do that several times, then you better write your script. You better automate that task. The problem with scripting now is that. Um, Scripts normally, and you, you, you get very uh, confused with that uh, when you do a lot, is that scripts doesn't have versioning. Like a lot of scripts, when people write these little things to, another, to do a, an alignment or mapping, uh, people tend to do their own little things in their own computer and don't care about sharing or care about uh, what's going to happen if someone sees that, that little program down the line. So. Uh, so very, very often and very soon, a uh, script is going to become something else that was different, uh, what was intended first. And you never know what's the version, who wrote that script, and what that script was intended. So Galax trying to avoid, to prevent these things from happening. And also prevents, uh, and it tries to enforce reproducibility in your data set, in your experiments. So Galax also is based on an open source uh, idea. So, so you have the whole code of Galax if you ever try to install Galax yourselves. Um, it has a very large community of developers. Uh, is is very well supported. It's flexible. It's expandable. It's scalable, and also is cloud aware. So you can put Galax inside of a cloud. You can put Galax inside of your computer. So you can move Galax. Uh, it's user friendly. Like it's kind of a different. User friendly is very uh, conceptual. So some people may find user friendly. Some pipe, some people find uh, command line more user friendly. But it, it, Galax is intended to to uh, make life easier for people that do not program. So the base idea behind Galax was actually came from uh, this. Uh, uh, Paper that's so a ten rules of reproducible science, and uh, two of those uh, authors of this, this paper actually there is a uh, author of Galax, is uh, Anton Nekrotenko and uh, James Taylor. And those basic rules are that every result uh, for for any uh, uh, for any um, research that you do, you should uh, keep track of every result that was produced. And you should also avoid the manual manipulation of your data. So if you produce something and then you have to open your data and then do a little modification, that's going to be very hard for someone to reproduce that because you may not have the ability to put that in a manuscript or to uh, document that. Uh, you have ar uh, archive um, and extract all the versions of every software that you use. So that is very often a big problem. So. I'm pretty sure majority of you here don't know this, the version of the software that you use, like the BWA that you use, or the, the Picard, or whatever. You probably don't have the, the, the notion of the version. So down the line, in two years, you're trying to reproduce that. You're going to try to use the most up-to-date version, and the may, most up-to-date version may not give the same result as the version that we're using right now. Uh, uh, we should also uh, version control all custom scripts. So if you have something that is very custom, that just belongs to you, also have to be uh, version control. Um, and you should record all intermediate results that you have. So you cannot just record your uh, 
fast queue, and then just show your weak file at the end of your analysis and say, well, that's my result. People need to know what happened in between if they want to ever reproduce your result. Um, you have uh, also include any uh, random uh, seed that you use for including uh, uh, randomness inside of your research. Uh, of course, you all have to store your uh, raw data behind plots. This is very important. Uh, you have to generate hierarchical uh, outputs. So, you know, your output should be incremental in terms of complexity. Yeah. So that's why you, we try to store, you know, you, you do a SAM, then you sort your SAM, then you mark duplication, etc. It has to be uh, incremental in terms of complexity so you can always revisit an intermediate state, state of your result. Uh, you should also, of course, put context, uh, textual statement behind your results. So, like uh, uh, Guillaume showed, that a big plot of uh, uh, translocation. It means nothing. It's just a beautiful picture if you don't have textual uh, uh, statements. Uh, and you should provide uh, public access to your scripts and to everything that you run and your result. So, Galaxy was actually con uh, conceived based on those. 10 uh, rules. Um, so this is the main Galax interface. Um, so in our uh, left side, we have a panel where we have these little uh, 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 menus where you, you, when you click there, it expands and it gives you a set of tools. So what Galax actually does, Galax creates a visual interface for all, any uh, bioinformatic tools, any actually sort of tools. So any tools that you have used today can be, uh, can be put inside of Galax with a graphical interface, so you don't ever have to go to, to come online. Um, so that's actually the original paper of Galax is in 2010, although Galax is older than that. Um, also, um, that's an interface of Galax and the cloud, an Amazon cloud, so you can go to Amazon and deploy your own Galaxy. Um, and it was, uh, it was written basically by uh, uh, Enes Efgan. Uh, so why, uh, what's the reason why you should use Galax? So, I mean, so Galax integrates uh, the input and the, the data source. So from one place you can uh, fetch your data. You don't ever have to leave Galax interface to fetch data. So Galax has uh, several ways of fetching data or upload data from, from your computer. Uh, Galax allow users uh, to use uh, main, many tools that they don't need to install. So the main Galax comp, uh, has more than 400 tools right now installed. And they are maintained and they are updated very uh, frequently. So that's, this takes actually a big burden from uh, the user. Uh, and Galaxy allows you to run workflows. So, and that is a very, very interesting uh, concept in Galaxy that if you go through a, a set of steps, you can record that steps uh, in a workflow. And next time you're going to try to use, you're going to just tell Galaxy, those are my input files, run the same set of steps as I have run before. Uh, Galax has entered the, uh, the next uh, gen uh, fully, so basically all the tools that you, you have used today are already ported to Galax. And Galax works on the cloud, so uh, so if you don't have access to a local Galax, or for reason that I'm going to show you don't want to use the main Galax, you can actually have uh, the options to go uh, use Galax on the cloud. Uh, so Galax believe, like I said, in reproducibility. So uh, you have the concept of history in Galax, where every action that you are having inside, that you do inside of Galax is recorded. Uh, so not only the program that you run, but the versions of the programs, um, the versions of the genome that you upload, uh, the version, uh, the size of your uh, data sets, and uh, the provenance of that data set. Everything is recorded. Uh, so Galax also has the concept of, of sharing. So 
once you uh, do your analysis, you can uh, select uh, an individual from another uh, from that the, the galaxy uh, and share that data with the, that person, or you can publish your data. Uh, you can make your data and the results publicly through the galaxy interface. Uh, Galax has, uh, well, it was made for biologists, and it was made thinking about people that are not comfortable uh, with programming. Uh, and it has actually a very, very large uh, developer community. So uh, I, I'm the part of this community, so we, we often develop new tools to Galax and develop new ways of uh, uh, import, uh, facilitating the data analysis. Uh, but Galax comes in very different flavors. Uh, it's, there is no one Galax. Galax is a platform that people can install and they do in several places. So those are the main, uh, the main uh, resources that you have in Galax. First, you have the, uh, the project.org, the galaxproject.org, which is the main web page where it explains everything about the, the project itself and how to get Galax, how to use Galax, uh, mainly lists. So that is the starting point if you want to, uh, to learn about Galax. The second link is the Use Galax, which is the link of the main Galax server. Um, and that, this Galax server is, the, is a public server, so uh, it's open to the world. So. Anyone can go there, create an account, upload the data, and do the analysis. It's free. Uh, you have the Get Galax uh, for people that want to try to install Galax. I do not recommend doing that. Uh, it's actually quite hard to install Galax if you if you just want to use. So I prefer like a public data uh, data server. Uh, and you have the Galax on the cloud. So the name of it says. Uh, we have a project called GenApp, the project that was developed here in Canada by me and a, and a group at McGill and Ishabrook. And you have several other galaxies, public galaxies around the world that are more specialized. Uh, so some, some people, uh, they package galaxies just to use uh, chip, to do chip seek, some people to RNA seek, or, or there is actually even people that have a galaxy for astrophysics. So, because Galax is basically a wrapper around the command line, so, so which Galax should you use? That depends a lot on your requirement of processing power and security needs. So basically, if you have a moderate size uh, uh, data set, then you can use the main Galax. You can use a local mm -hmm. Galax, and for local, I mean a Galax that you're trying to install your own machine. Uh, you can use the cloud, or you can use the gen app. If your uh, requirement, computational requirements are moderate, you still can use all of them. Uh, if you want to share your data, then the main galaxy is still a good one. Local is very limited because, I mean, people have to have access to your computer for sharing. So uh, the cloud, uh, yes, but with some restrictions because people have to know uh, how to use your galaxy cloud. It might not be open to the world. Uh, and you can use GenApp for that. Uh, if we, uh, you need all the tools that are in the main Galax, so there's uh, several tools, then of course the main is the, the way to go. Uh, local, probably not because installing all those 400 tools would be very complicated. Uh, the, the cloud is also a good option, although you're going to have to know a little bit of uh, Linux to, to be able to have all the tools uh, inside of the cloud. Uh, and GenApp is already there done for you. Uh, if you need absolute security, and that's the, that's the big uh, problem here. So if you have the data that are uh, clinical data, you should never use the main galaxy. Um, and there are several reasons for that. Uh, one of them is that Galax, uh, the, the main data, uh, main server of Galax, it uses a protocol to transfer data that's called FTP. And anything that goes through FTP goes unencrypted. So it's basically your text goes open. So if you have uh, a hacker attack in the 
we call like a man in the middle, it's gonna get everything that you have unencrypted and gonna have all your data. So uh, be careful what you're gonna put inside of the main galaxy. Uh, the local, yes, is inside of your computer. As long as your computer is safe, you should be safe. Um, the cloud, I put a yes with uh, exclamation mark, uh, exclamation mark because you also need to know how to securize your cl your, uh, your cloud. So if you if you're comfortable with that, manage certificates, manage uh, uh, security groups, then you'll be fine. If you're not uh, that comfortable with this aspect of cloud, uh, be careful how you put your data there. And GenApp is actually a safe bet because I modified I modified the Galaxy on GenApp to use another protocol that you call SCP, and then all your data goes and encrypt, <coughs> encrypted. So. So even if they inter intercepted, you would not have uh, your data compromise. Uh, in terms of price, uh, the main Galaxy is free. Uh, the local Galaxy is free, is yours. The cloud is not free. So you're going to have a cost associated with firing up that, that image and also run your computation. So be very careful with that. Because uh, when you look at the price of one hour, uh, Amazon instance looks very, very, looks almost nothing. It's like six, eight cents for a good size instance. But over time, that, that actually add up and it's pretty costly. Um, and GenApp is free. So GenApp is, uh, is a good option if you, if you need security, uh, scalability, and, and want price. Um, so the challenge of having so many galaxies, so many options of galaxies, uh, the problem is galaxies like, are not created all equal. So it means that, like I said before, there are some people that have galaxies that are uh, very niche galaxies. So, so you cannot just go, uh, because then there is named galaxy, it's going to do what I want it to do. Uh, and uh, the galaxy team are trying to move to kind of an empty, empty shell uh, installation of Galax where you install just the Galax engine and you choose which tools you're going to put inside. So that's why like no all Galax, not every Galax is made equal because some institutes might just do one type of analysis and might prefer uh, just install the tools that they are interested in and not want to maintain all the type of, of tools. Um, so adding tools to Galax also may cause problems, so they try to avoid putting everything inside of Galax. And the Galax now, now have this concept, well not now, but for a while has this concept of tool shed, which is, is a repository of tools where develops, they do the development of the tool and they put this uh, repository, and the admin of the Galax can just fetch the tool from there and it gets installed locally. Uh, just to show how the project Galax looks like, so when you go to that website, you're gonna end up uh, you're gonna hit the the main Galax uh, 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 website where you have the options they use Galax. So you're gonna be redirected to the to the main server. You're gonna have the Get Galax. So if you want to try to install the Galax locally, or if you want to um, to use in the cloud, so there's a tutorial how to use that on Amazon. There are, there are also some, some screencasts. Actually, there's a lot of screencasts about Galax and how to use it and a lot of pipelines, how to do RNA-seq, chip-seq, snip calling, you name, there will be a tutorial there. Uh, and they get involved where we have several types of mailing lists for users or developers. So. The main Galax, um, like I showed before, uh, that's what you would, uh, that's what it looks like. Uh, we have a the Cloudman, uh, which is the interface that Amazon have to deploy your, your Galax on the cloud. Um, and you have a a week page where. Um, it lists actually all the public Galax that we have uh, in the world. So people that have a public Galax, they put their public there. 
Galaxy there, but like I said, not all of them have all the tools, so some of them may not have the tool that you, you want. Uh, here's just an example that actually a user would not see that. Uh, Amazon administration administrator would see that. That's what the tool shed looks like. So the tool shed has this list of uh, 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 analysis such as assembly or uh, chip seek or RNA seek. And if you do a, like a, a search, for example, for tools related to some files, and you would have a, like a set of uh, tools and then description of the tools and then uh, a little bit more about who developed the tool, etc. And from there, a uh, administrator can actually install um, the, the tool inside of Galax. Um, this is the Galax on the cloud. So as you can see on the top there, on the top of uh, the URL is an Amazon address. So it's kind of Amazon DNS that maps to a, an IP address. Um, but it's, it's basically the same interface across, uh, across projects. Uh, any question? So I'm going to talk just a little bit about this project called GenApp. It's a Canadian project. Uh, it's developed by a team here, and uh, the team of uh, Guillaume Bourg, uh, by another, the team of uh, uh, Brian Caron in the HPC from McGill and by a team of uh, Chebrook University. And we developed this, uh, this uh, platform to, uh, to allow, uh, to facilitate the use uh, of genetic and genomic uh, data and tools for uh, life researcher, life science researcher. Uh, the GenApp actually is, uh, is on top of a canary network, which is actually a very, uh, very uh, it's a high speed network that we have in Canada. And also supported by Compute Canada, which is, is an organization that uh, that uh, oversees all the supercomputers in Canada. So, so GenApp actually sits on top of a very fast network and a, uh, a network of supercomputer across the country. So uh, the GenApp hosts uh, it makes tools available for uh, for Canadians, Canadian researchers, and international collaborators through a web portal. And through the Gen app, you can instantiate your own Galaxy. So you can actually create a Galaxy that only belongs to you. So that Galaxy is not shared to any, with anyone, but you and people that you choose to. So when you go to Gen app, that's what you're going to see at first. Uh, to make use of Gen app, you first need to create a Compute Canada account. So there's that link there. Uh, and then once you register in Compute Canada, you automatically register uh, to GenApp. So you don't actually need to come back and recreate an account in GenApp. The two things are done uh, together. Uh, and once you, um, you uh, create a Compute Canada account, you can log in into GenApp. And you're going to see an interface similar to that. Uh, where you can uh, create different types of applications and start using. So you can create your Galax. There are data hubs. There are track hubs for a UCSC browser. You have a private UCSC browser inside of GenApp. Um, so, uh, so like I said, you have to uh, first log in to uh, Compute Canada to create an account in Compute Canada and then log in to GenApp. <coughs> and then you can create your Galaxy, uh, and then you can control uh, who is going to use that Galaxy with you, who you want to share that Galaxy with. Presently, we have uh, those Galaxy can be instantiated into supercomputers. One at, that's uh, the University of Sherbrooke, and one at McGill. So the way you would create your Galaxy is super simple. You'd go to that page, and there's the button uh, here that say create an application. You would choose Galax and you tell which cluster you want to put that Galax. And then you say create, and voila, you have a Galax full installed that's private to you. And that's how hard it's going to get. Um, as you can see, the interface is pretty much the same as the main Galax. We try to make Galax uh, a mirror of the main uh, 
uh, Genap galaxy, the mirror of the main galaxy. So everything that you see in the main galaxy, you're going to find in Genap. Plus some tools that I developed just for, for Genap. Um, here's a little set of uh, tools that we may find in, inside of Galaxy. So you have, um, uh, have ways to get your data. You have ways to visualize your data. Uh, ways to uh, some tools, JFK tools. Uh, tools for peak calling, etc., etc. VCF tools. So basically, virtually everything that you did in this uh, workshop in these two days could have been done uh, through uh, that interface. Um, so basically, what you do in Galaxy is you start by logging to, to Galaxy, and then you get your data. Either you upload from your computer. Or you you get you fetch your data from external source. Uh, you manipulate your data. You save your outputs. You save your workflow if you, that's some some sort of analysis that you want to do uh, more than one time. And you have the option to publish that through its, its interface. Um, so that's pretty much that's that's what you should do in the main galaxy. So you would go to to the login of the register, whether or not you are a returning uh, user. And it's a very simple process. In terms of creation of Galaxy, it's going to ask you an email and a password and a, uh, sorry, and a public name. Uh, Galaxy also allow you to uh, use a public uh, open ID. So if you have an account on Google, you just tell Galaxy to, to authenticate you through that Google account. Actually, it has Google, Yahoo. And AO, so who who's AO nowadays? But anyway, um, so that's the interface to get your data. So if you go to the get data and expand that uh, little menu there, it will appear this little box. That's something that you're gonna do in the practice. And you have basically uh, three options for that. You can uh, choose a local file. That's a file that's in your computer. Choose a file that is in your FTP. So it's something that it's a file that you, you put in a FTP server, Galaxy is gonna fetch for you. Uh, or you can give Galaxy a web address so Galaxy goes and fetch the data for you. So you don't have to have ever to download anything. So in that example, uh, I'm downloading something from uh, uh, I'm downloading a fast singer singer file. Uh, it's just that I put uh, I uh, paste that URL there, and then I just tell Galax to to start. Uh, so Galax also have other ways of fetching data. One of them is fetching the data uh, from the UCSC browser. There, there are actually two platforms that are very integrated. Uh, so I'm not, I won't explain for you what UCSC browser because I'm pretty sure that you all you all know. But from the genome tables. You have a little button here that says sends your output to Galaxy. So you can actually, I'm here, I'm downloading a human uh, genome. I'm downloading chromosome Y. And I'm going to, uh, in a bad format. And I'm sending that output to Galaxy. So from the UCC browser interface, I can import a data set into my Galaxy history. Um, so Galaxy actually, like I said, has hundreds of tools. And it's kind of sometimes maybe complicated to navigate through its interface. So one way of navigating the interface of Galaxy is doing a search by uh, keyword. So you're going to type the keyword that you want of the name of your tool, or at least that has to be at least three letters keyword. So Galaxy will search through uh, its menu and going to show the potential uh, matches for what you're looking for. And that's what you're going to, I hope you do today, because there's a lot of tools that you're going to have to use. So instead of going through the menu, you just type the name. Um, so, so like I said, you can, so since it can expand, uh, expand those uh, little menus, so you can actually uh, look for any tool. So for example, here I'm looking for a tool that has SAM on it. And I'm showing actually three results. One, what it would look like in the cloud, what it looks like in the main galaxy, and what it looks like in GenApp, uh, just by looking at SAM. 
uh, they are slightly different because of the way the the, the search is implemented. Um, in the main galaxy, they are more uh, permissive. So, for example, the first one there is nothing to do with some file, but where's my mouse? But because there is some in sample, it's gonna appear there. While in GenApp, I don't allow that to happen. So I want everything that has some on it to be there. Uh, but but it's basically the same um, the same interface. So once you choose your uh, the tool that you want to run, you're gonna be presented to <coughs> to it to its um, graphical interface, where the first the first line here will be your data set. So which data set you're trying to analyze, uh, and the other uh, the other lines are pretty much the parameters that you're gonna give to the tool. Mm -hmm. uh, so Galax normally we normally try to write uh, tools that have like a help here, so it tells what it does and what actually every single parameter means. Not that we try not to be too extensive, so but as much as we can to give that information. Um, so once you import a tool inside of Galaxy, it's going to appear in your right side, actually as a, uh, a green box. It's going to appear something like that. And you have like these little uh, icons here that you can uh, make some actions with that little uh, icon. So if you poke the eye, it's going to show you the data set. Uh, if you use the uh, the pencil, the pencil, uh, you can set up the metadata of your of your data, so you can tell uh, which uh, build your data is associated. You can tell uh, which type of file is that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the X is to delete the file. So, for example, if you poke the eye of a fast file, that's what you would see. <coughs> um, if you use the pencil, um, then you could set all the metadata. So you could say, well, that data comes from a G19. Uh, you can put information about uh, the provenance of that data. You can, you can rename your data. So that is, uh, is uh, in agreement with those reproducibility uh, steps that we talked uh, talk before which someone trying to do the same analysis will have actually all the type, all the information uh, that about your analysis just by looking at the, your history. So as an example here, I'm just showing uh, how to do like a quality control, for example. If I want to do a quality control on those data sets here, on, um, on those uh, four data sets here. So I would choose a, uh, a tool called FastQC and then I would put the tool, I would tell, uh, put the parameters. And that's what Galaxy will show me. So you are familiar with that. We saw that yesterday. It's the same type of result that you obtained uh, using command line yesterday with uh, Mathieu. And after that, you can go about trimming for quality uh, those data sets and then reanalyzing, uh, et cetera, et cetera but there is no command line associated with that. Well, behind the, behind the scene, under the hood, Galaxy is doing all the command lines for you. Everything happens if it, if it is a command line. You, you as a user just don't see it happen. Um, so Galaxy has the concept of a history. So basically everything, every step that you're gonna take will be recorded. And everything about the steps that you're taking is recorded. So you can actually in, take that history put inside of a file to give to someone else, they're gonna be able to upload that history inside of Galaxy and see everything and, uh, and reproduce your, your uh, uh, result. Uh, from the history menu, you have a little icon that uh, kind of an engine icon that have history um, actions. Uh, basically, some of the most important are extracting a workflow so you can say to Galax from the steps that I made construct some sort of workflow so I don't have to repeat that ever again um, and you can share that history with someone with one user or with you can make that public to anyone with the the web address 
uh, and you can do things like delete the, uh, the, the history, rename the history, uh, export and import to a file. So here's just an example of a publication. So I, I click on my history and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna share with a user or I'm gonna publish and make that available to anyone. And if you're trying to extract a workflow, um, then uh, what Galaxy is gonna present is that. You're gonna have, just have to give it the workflow a name. Mouse. You give a workflow a name and then you're gonna just create the workflow. And what a workflow looks like is that. So it's basically all the steps that you have, you have done. So next time you're trying to rerun that analysis, you just need to inform Galax what are your input file, and Galax will, will do the rest for you. So Galax is aware of the steps, and is aware of the dependence of the steps. So if you need to, to trim and then align, so Galax will know that you're gonna hold the job that's gonna align until the trimming part is done, and then we're gonna start the job for the online. Um, so there's a lot of tutorials inside of Galax, so um, you can go to videos, and then uh, Galax has a page on Vimeo, um, Vimeo where it has um, several, several uh, screencasts of how to do Galax analysis of several type of, of data. Here's an example of uh, peak, uh, peak calling. Um, so another thing is our useful resource. So you have the use Galax, which and the Galax on the cloud. So it's a good place to start. Galax has a user support that is very very active. It's called BioStar, and that's actually where everybody has doubts of Galax goals. And you can search. You can just type your problem, and people. And normally, like, you can search problem, the same type of problem that might have an answer already. If it's not, they are very active in answering you. And finally, we have uh, GenApp. So the, the GenApp web page is genapp.ca. Uh, we have a week as well to, for how to use GenApp. We have a Twitter, and you have a support, uh, so if you ever have a problem. I, I strongly encourage you. Uh, to have an account in Compute Canada, who, whoever here don't have Compute Canada accounts, it's free. We provide like an amazing amount of computer power for you, and and you have resources of, uh, such as a uh, GenApp and and, and uh, Galax, and actually pipelines and uh, pipelines in command line and pipelines that are like Galax that are available for you, and we also have a a team of bioinformaticians that actually can support you. So if you have problems with your analysis or problems with uh, your code is too slow, we want to help with parallelize your code, we want to help run your code in supercomputers, we have a big team of uh, people that can help you doing that. So mm -hmm. I strongly encourage you to, to have an account in Compute Canada and to try out uh, GenApp. So questions? Locally, yeah. I mean, you can you can still ask questions about if something goes wrong locally. Um, yeah, I may not be able to tell all the time what's going wrong because I don't know what which libraries or which programs are installed in your computer. But yes, I mean, how to prevent you from from asking some questions to us? Yes. Can researchers get an account from Canada? Yes. 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 You just have to. Yeah, we just have to contact Compute Canada, and uh, there's a little form that you, you can write, and then... Yes. About vectorial genomics and metagenomics, is it most important by genomics? Yes, yes, there are... Um, let's see if We're I... We're talking about uh, eukaryotic genome, and I was wondering about prokaryotic. Yes, there are actually several tools for... Uh, uh, I'm not sure if it's going to appear here. But there are actually several tools uh, in, in, in GenApp for bacterial genome uh, and metagenome. There's actually several tools for that. And yeah, if there is something that is not there and you need, then you can contact us. Right? We can try to, to help you with that. Plants? Yeah. They're, they're actually, so 
uh, inside of Galax, behind Galax, we have basically three terabytes of data of different types of genomes. We have uh, right now more than 300 uh, genomes, uh, eukaryotic genomes in Galax. Uh, and bacteria, we have almost everything that they have in the CBI. Already have the reference genomes installed? Everything. Uh, uh, like I said, just about 300 genomes. So I have index for PWA, uh, GTK, uh, and, top, and sort of aligner. So we have everything. So we have like basically uh, six terabytes of data mm -hmm. that are uh, reference genome inside of GenApp, inside of Galaxy. So we can load our own device? Not your tool. You can load yeah. your own data. Not reference you can load your reference yeah. yes you can load your reference actually you, uh, today in the process you're gonna you're gonna actually create your own you're gonna upload your own reference you're gonna not gonna use the reference that's there but yeah so if you have a genome that's not there you load your genome and use that genome as a reference there's no problem uh, we used to have a, a galaxy, local galaxy in our server yeah but, uh, after cycling intrusion Never, uh, in that. So right. is it any possible to recover all the data? Yes, Galax. So that's another thing about Galax. Galax never deletes anything. So if you, even if you delete something from the from the your history, Galax keeps that uh, that data like somewhere. It's just not displayed to you. So, so yeah. So you, how can we get into the, the, the process of the data? So I'm not sure about your locally for you, for you, but uh, you're going to see, like, when you delete some data, you, there is a button in Galaxy now that says, undelete my data, and you can actually just recover. But we cannot log into the, the, the that's no, cannot log in anymore. Ah, you cannot log in anymore? No. Uh, so, so, so cyber intrusion, so after that, so we just lost it, and then after the internet come back, but still cannot, the gas didn't. Your gas didn't come back? It's not. Who is maintaining your Galaxy? Huh? Who is maintaining your Galaxy? Um, we have a lot of group there, so we um, just If, I mean, if they want to write to us, uh, I'll, I'll be okay helping them to, to bring it back. Okay. No problem. Uh, can I have a question? Yes. Can, you, um, can you extract the code behind Galaxy? Let's say you, you work up your workflow, yes. you really like it, and then you want to have the command line. Can you do that? No, unfortunately, no. Like you can, I mean, you can individually tell every single job what was like what's the command line Galaxy. You, you can you can see that. Oh, you can see that. But then to extract that, you can actually to copy and paste in some sort yeah. of document. Okay. But it is possible to, to know everything that uh, that you ran, like with all the commands, okay. etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah, that's possible. Okay, thank you. So there are several signs. So you should to to use in Compute Canada. You you should go to genapp.ca. Uh, you should have an account in Compute Canada first. Yeah. So then you pick one site, right? There's several sites. Yes. So so right now we have Galaxy in two sites. One is in Sherbrooke, uh, and one is in at McGill. Uh, and then yeah, and then you can start your Galaxy. So we need to go to the right site. Well, so you have to have an account on the site first, so because you, you want to put your, your data inside of that computer, right? So, I mean, you can do that through the web interface, so you don't have to actually do any command line. You just ask for, for an account, <clears throat> and then from Galaxy, you put your data there. There are more advanced ways, advanced ways of putting data inside of Galaxy. That includes command line as well, but, uh, but you just, the only thing that you need to have is a Compute Canada account and an account on, um, on Sherbrooke or on my, at McGill. That's all. And then you can use your Galaxy right away. No problem required. This picture is asking if you get a Python installation account after the Compute Canada application. Yeah, so, so the process of applying to, Compute, uh, applying to Compute Canada is a bit convoluted somehow because you have to apply, you have to ask for a Compute Canada account. And then you have to go and say, I need an account in a specific cluster. 
So you have to say, I, I have an account in Copy Canada, and I need resources at Sherbrooke or at McGill. And, and then you have it. Then they're going to give you a login and a password uh, uh, for that computer, and that, that's what you're going to use for to log into Jenna. Okay. No question? Well, thank you very much. Thank you.